Here's an overview of what Direct Digital Synthesis, or DDS, is and how it works, including an Arduino online simulation and a real hardware demo. DDS is a way of generating analog waveforms from digital sample data. In its simplest form, the system could be a binary counter hooked up to a digital-to-analog converter, and as the counter increments, the count value itself can be used as data samples, generating a ramp voltage in this case. So if we say the DAC can generate between 0 and 5 volts out, as this 8-bit counter goes from 0 to 255 for a total of 256 steps, we generate between 0 volts and 5 volts and then start back at 0 and keep going. This generates 256 samples per waveform cycle. The DDS architecture is more involved than this and will build up to a more traditional implementation as we expand upon the concept. You can skip through the video using the time index in the description. Here's a simple 8-bit DAC made from an R2R resistor ladder connected to an UNO. You can look up how the resistor ladder works, but this one takes an 8-bit input and converts it into an output voltage from 0 volts to a little less than whatever the Arduino's 5-volt supply happens to be. I'm using 1K resistors and 2K resistors in my ladder, and I've added this 100 nano filter capacitor on the output of the DAC just to help smooth out the waveform and make it less of a staircase between samples. In the sketch, we have an unsigned 8-bit count variable that we just keep incrementing, and it keeps rolling over to zero when it reaches 255 and counts to the next step. I'm simulating all of this in Tinkercad circuits, which is free, so they have an UNO simulator, and you can simulate a sketch as well as hardware. It simulates the serial plotter as well as the serial monitor, so here I'm just sending out the count value from 0 to 255, and it plots a ramp waveform. And when I put an oscilloscope on the output of the DAC, we can see 0 to 5 volts based on our data. I built a real hardware version of this, and I used an Arduino Mega instead of Uno, but it should work exactly the same. And instead of 1K and 2K resistors, I had 10K and 20K available. Even though I'm sending out 256 total samples to generate this one ramp cycle, we can send out a different number of samples to represent a cycle, as long as we have enough data points to adequately reconstruct the waveform we are trying to generate. Since this isn't exactly the best way to implement a DAC, my real waveform may have imperfections and glitches on it, but we're just doing this as a demo. If I stop this simulation, comment out the part where we're sending the counter to our DAC, and just bring in this part, we can turn the ramp generator into a square wave generator by just checking if we are in the first half or the second half of our count cycle, and then just send out all zeros or all ones. If we want to generate a sine wave, or any arbitrary waveform for that matter, we can have a lookup table, which is just an array of data samples stored in memory, and we can send out these data points on the DAC for every cycle through the loop, and in this case, those data points will plot a sine wave. We're using 256 samples here to make up a sine wave, so as our counter goes from 0 to 255, we're sending out that particular sample position out of our lookup table. So when the count is 0, we send out this first value of 128, which is in the middle of our total range. So we start our sine wave cycle halfway, then we count up and generate the sine wave ending back at the end of this data table, close to 128 at the center again. Then when we start over and send out the first sample, we're right at the center, so we're generating a continuous sine wave. This is what a more complete DDS system looks like. We have our counter counting up, and then starting over and counting up again. As the counter counts up, we move through this lookup table, getting data points, and sending those values to a DAC. The DAC turns those into voltage levels, so we generate an approximated version of the original waveform, and if we want to smooth this out, we can put it through a low-pass filter and generate a more familiar-looking sine wave. 
the system runs on a clock that causes the counter to increment as well as causes the DAC to convert a number into a voltage. The clock runs at a rate called the sample rate since it's the rate at which we convert digital samples into analog outputs. In our Arduino DDS, the clock rate would be equivalent to how long it takes us to get through the loop each time and do the calculations and send the data to the DAC. And if we wanted more precise timing, we could set an interrupt so that we go and perform these actions at more predictable intervals. If our counter has 8 bits and can store 256 different values, and our lookup table has 256 data points, we can directly use the counter bits as an index to the lookup table, so as the counter increments, the data sample in that location of the lookup table gets sent to the DAC. The counter is called a phase accumulator because its value points to a certain phase location along a waveform cycle. The count increment is set by a frequency control or tuning word, and on every clock cycle, the phase accumulator increments by the tuning word amount. We've been using a count increment of 1 so far, so we're counting every value between 0 and 255 without skipping. The phase accumulator and lookup table portion of this system form a structure called a numerically controlled oscillator, where a tuning word number ultimately controls the frequency of a generated signal. By increasing the tuning word, the counter will skip values, which causes some samples in the lookup table to get skipped. So we end up moving completely through this table faster, and we're sending out less data points to generate a sine wave, but depending on how we're going to use the signal, this may still be perfectly adequate, and by generating a full cycle faster, we can generate a higher frequency. The phase accumulator is usually much larger than the number of bits we need just to look at all the samples in the lookup table. It can be 16 bits or even 32 bits and only a small fraction of those bits would get used to look up samples. If we look at a 16-bit counter as an example, since our lookup table needs an 8-bit number to access all the values in it, we could take these upper 8 most significant bits as our lookup table index and just ignore these lower 8. So with a 16-bit counter here, and we're only taking the top 8 bits to look at our table, the counter is still incrementing on every clock pulse, and the DAC is also converting a number into a voltage on every clock pulse. So if we let this counter run, now these lower 8 bits are incrementing, but our actual data table 8 bits are not moving. So every time this lower number changes, the DAC is taking the very first sample, position 0 in our table, and sending it out over and over as a voltage of 0 volts. Eventually, when this 8-bit counter down here reaches the max and rolls over to 0, this first bit is going to finally increment to a 1, and now we've moved to the next data sample in our lookup table, and we keep sending that value to the DAC. So if I stop this simulation and just change the count value, or the tuning word, make it count up by 50. Now, by the time 6 clock pulses have come, we've actually started incrementing our main 8-bit counter for our lookup table. So what this does is allow us to change the rate that we're counting and cycling through our data table based on how fast we make this lower 8-bit counter count. If we make it so large, 850, it immediately will have rolled over here a couple of times and started incrementing up here, and it's actually going to skip count values up here too. And it's okay to skip samples to generate a sine wave and increase the frequency as long as we meet Nyquist conditions where our sample rate is greater than twice the highest frequency component of the signal we're attempting to generate. So, if we choose a sample rate of 9060 to send out that many data samples per second, our maximum generated frequency should be less than half of that, or less than 4530 hertz. 
The UNO should be able to handle that sample rate, so it's being used in this project. Putting it all together, there's an equation that determines the tuning word needed in order to generate a certain frequency when we have decided on a phase accumulator counter size and a sample rate clock. If we want to use a different number of samples in our lookup table, we'll need to use a different number of bits out of this larger phase accumulator. For example, instead of 256, if we wanted 512 samples, we could take the upper 9 bits instead of just the upper 8 bits off of our larger counter, and that allows us to again access all the data points in our lookup table. This is the demo sketch I have set up, and I'm actually using it in a Mega instead of an Uno because it's what I have available, but it should run the same on an Uno. It uses the same setup here, so I'm using digital pins 2 through 9 on this R2R DAC, 20K and 2K resistors with a 100 nano capacitor. This is the DDS equation, and for my phase accumulator I'm using a 32-bit counter, because 32 bits, although it's probably way more than I need, it's a convenient number for an Arduino variable. And this variable stores whatever data sample is going to get sent to the DAC. The sample rate I'm using is 90, 60 hertz. So I have an interrupt set to go in and I set a flag called send sample every time we're interrupted. And in the main loop, I will do the calculations when it's time. Here's where I set what frequency I want in Hertz, so I can just change that to whatever I want, including a decimal, and then I calculate the tuning word needed using that equation based on a 32-bit phase accumulator and a 9060 sample rate and the frequency that I'm trying to generate. Then on each interrupt, I increment the phase accumulator by the tuning word amount, and that controls which samples get sent out to generate one full cycle of a waveform that results in this frequency. It just takes care of itself as a free-running system, and if I want I can change my target frequency within the sketch and start immediately generating a different frequency. In the setup I just configure all eight DAC pins as outputs, and I set up a timer interrupt based on running at a 16 megahertz UNO or MEGA to get the sample rate that I want. In the main loop we're just checking if it's time to send a sample, and if not we just keep waiting. When an interrupt occurs, and it is time to send a sample, we set the flag to true, and then in the loop we have our 8-bit count variable here to address all the samples in this table. So to take the 8 top bits out of the phase accumulator, we shift the 32-bit phase accumulator to the right 24 times. Then we just send to the DAC the lookup table sample stored at that location in the table and we increment our phase accumulator by the tuning word, clear the flag because we've already sent out a sample, and we keep looping until we get interrupted again, and we end up sending out 9060 samples per second, generating whatever frequency we were targeting. So we can now easily generate waveforms with fine frequency resolution control. If we need a better quality waveform at a given frequency, we can improve system parameters like increasing our sample rate to allow us to send more samples per second. And if we have more data points in our lookup table, we can reconstruct a more accurate copy of the original signal. It would also help if our DAC had more than 8 bits to work with so that we can generate smaller voltage steps in our waveform. We could also use interpolation to calculate a best fit point between two points available to us. For example, we have 196 and then we jump to 198, so we could calculate that 197 belongs in between and generate that. That's the basics of generating signals using direct digital synthesis. Share this video if you feel it may be helpful to others. Thanks for watching, and check back to see what projects we end up using this concept with.